Miguel Figueroa, he's going to address us on the drug crisis and issues that are going on in Pima County, particularly relating to feminol, fentanyl, and his presentation will present the overview of the latest trends and problems in our area and in the high schools. It is, it is gotten that far down. Miguel was born in and raised in Tucson. He has 22 years experience with the Tucson Police Department and is presently serving as student engagement officer in the Operation Southern Division. We want to thank you. Let's give a warm welcome to Miguel. Well, on that note, I'm used to having a high school crowd. <laughs> Again, I'll introduce myself a little bit, Miguel Figueroa. I have been with the police department for two, 22 years. The last 10 years or so, I've actually been assigned to pretty much our local schools um, in the city of Tucson. So currently, I am assigned to Operations Division South, which is considered the south side of, of the city of Tucson, which incorporates um, anything from 22nd Street all the way down to about Valencia, a little bit south of Valencia, east um, to about Alvernon, west and to about Mission. There's some other pockets that might be in there that are still city um, and part of the area. So I spend a lot of time with our high school students. Um, the way this came upon was um, the Lieutenant Cunningham that's in, in charge of the Counter Narcotics Alliance realized there's been an uptick in um, fatal overdoses, fentanyl um, fatal overdoses with youth. Um, and we're talking about the range of 15 to about 25. Um, and she wanted to bring a little bit more aware, awareness to our youth. So we started going to the local high schools in the south side and pretty much presenting to them on what is out there. Even though we know they're exposed to it and they know what's out there, it was just another way to get them to understand that once you start playing with fentanyl that ultimately it's going to take your life. Um, so our goal was to reach as much high school students. Um, we've hit every Southside High School. Um, we just did Tucson High um, this past week. We're at Tucson High for two days. Um, and so we're trying to branch out and go to other schools that will welcome us. Um, I'm not sure how we, we got with um, your committee here. Uh -huh. But thank you for having me. Um, some of the information is kind of basic. Um, but there's some stats and some numbers that I'll probably go over just so you can get an impact of what truly we're experiencing in Southern Arizona, not just in Pima County, just, just a general as, as a state. Um, Counter Narcotics Alliance, I'm not sure if anybody's familiar that, with that. What it is, it's a, it's a narcotics alliance that all the agent Southern um, Arizona agencies are part of. So Sheriff Department, um, Sahuarita's part of it, um, all the local agencies um, like Tucson Police, Marana, Oro Valley, you'll have all the federal agencies, DEA, um, Border Patrol, ICE, they all are part of this organization and what they do is they do everything that has to do with narcotics. Lieutenant Cunningham has now been in charge of trying to bring more awareness and try to see if we can figure out a way to, to reduce some of the numbers of fatal overdoses or to try to get more information out there to get some of these people help because it's, 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 it's getting pretty crazy. It's pretty out of hand of how much overdoses we're having. How, how, where fentanyl came upon? Fentanyl pretty much, it is a legal drug. Generally fentanyl is, is you, you can get it at the hospital when you go for like a major operation or surgery. Sometimes when there's folks that are allergic to morphine, they, they will give you fentanyl. Fentanyl normally is about 100 times stronger than morphine, so it has to be really controlled. So it's a synthetic drug that's made. This is the commonly thing that you'll see out in the community if there's a traffic stop or if it's confiscated. Normally you'll see the, the blue and they're called blues. That's the street name. Or M30s because that's the marking on the pill will be an M30 on it. I'll show you the pills right now. So you'll see the com most common name is blues. The way when somebody takes fentanyl, what it does is, it, the way I describe it to kids so they can understand it, when they take fentanyl, what it does, it puts like a blanket over the their receptors in their brain. So what it does, it puts a cover on it and it gives you this instant high and it tells your brain to pretty much shut down. This is where they get the high. So when they take the fentanyl, depending on how much dose of the fentanyl is in there, 
it puts a blanket on your receptors and it tells you it slows down your breathing it kind of is a depressant so what happens is your body will instantly go like it, it looks like you're in a deep sleep the problem with that is if you if the pill has too much fentanyl because it's not regulated when you buy one of these we have no idea how long how much it is how long it's going to take it for actually to kill you if you have too much it can kill you instantly um, and that's where Narcan comes in and we'll touch a little bit on Narcan it's man-made that's probably the biggest issue that it's not made in a pharmacy when you if, if you go to like CVS or Walgreens they order it from pharmaceuticals these are being made unfortunately in Mexico are we looking at baggies or those individual pills those are baggies full of pills okay, I couldn't tell you how much they weigh or Sorry. whether it's just the picture that was um, pills that were confiscated um, but these are all individual bags full of individual pills mm -hmm. when I speak with kids what I usually tell them is if you don't take fentanyl on a daily basis because it's something that's prescribed to you how would you know which one is the authentic one or which one is the fake one by looking at it there's no way of knowing that's where you get the M30 one on one side of the pill will have the M printed on it on the other side will be the 30 that's where you get the, the name M30. Generally, they're blue in color. That's where the blues comes in to the, nick, the name on the streets. Usually, you'll hear blues. In 2022, 106,000 people died from fatal overdose. And approximately in 2023, they said about 112. I have basic numbers from the lieutenant. Two weeks ago, they had 12 fatal overdoses in Pima County. You know, it kind of fluctuates, so there might be days where they have, weeks where they have more or less. But if you just imagine 12 in a week, if we did the math in 365 days, if we continue that pace, how amount of people that can actually um, end up getting killed by the fatal overdose. It talks about 14 granules of fentanyl. Usually the, the science experiment I do with the kids is I'll take a salt shaker and I'll walk around and I'll have them put their hand out and I'll put a little bit of salt. And where they can visualize, if you can count 14 granules of, sugar, of salt, that is enough fentanyl to give you a fatal overdose. The biggest thing now is with our, our, our juvenile, or with our youth is, fentanyl is being mixed in marijuana, it's being mixed in heroin, if, you, if they still use the traditional heroin, it's in cocaine. Right now, fentanyl is being pretty much mixed in every type of drug that's out there. So we, we talk about the students is, because the majority of the recreational drug they use is marijuana, and we tell them that now when you, you just don't know, if you're gonna be smoking marijuana, you don't know if somebody is lacing it or adding fentanyl to it. The reason people are doing this, and this is the drug dealers, is fentanyl is highly, highly addictive, where you can possibly get addicted off the first time you use. So if they get you, where you get addicted to it, that just means you come back and buy more and more and purchase. So uh, uh, unfortunately, it comes down to it's money for them. Um, and unfortunately, some drug dealers are very smart entrepreneurs where they know how to make money. Cheap and accessible. Right now, if you went to our part of like the south side of Tucson and went to like a QT or a Circle K, where unfortunately some of the people are using this, if you went up there to try to purchase a pill, what do you think the going rate is for a pill right now if you went to the store? 50 cents to a dollar. And, and what juvenile, what young man, young lady right now cannot go look for 50 pennies or even scrounge up a dollar to go and unfortunately buy one of these pills? It's not happening. You know, unfortunately the way the kids are getting it is usually at, at, a, at a party. They like to call them kickbacks. This is usually where they're, where, where they're introduced to it. Or it's usually a good friend of them is somebody that's already using some type of medication to get high as like a Percocet or a Xanax. And they're purchasing these person disease on the street because they don't have a prescription. So then they go and buy the fake prescriptions off the street, the fake pills, and this is when they start playing with uh, possibly getting into where they can have an overdose. Naloxone, we, they call it Narcan. Um, that's just a, a, a nasal spray, and I'll show you a picture of it right now, that brings people back from the dead. That's the best way I can describe it. 
somebody who's on has a fatal overdose or is about to have a fatal overdose with fentanyl, if you give them Narcan, it will be you know, bring them back from the dead. All it does, it breaks that blanket that it puts over your receptors and works its way in there. This meta, and I don't know the breakdown, and I apologize. Where it it reverses the effect of the overdose and it brings you back. We've had incidents where we've had um, people that have are almost dead from the fatal and we give them Narcan and when they come back they don't know what's going on or they don't realize what happened and so it leads to sometimes physical altercations because <laughs> they don't know what we're doing. Nar Narcan is available to everybody nowadays. It's free. Even the unfortunately the people that are addicted to it <coughs> carry it on them all the time and as one friend to another if one goes down they know that they're able to grab the Narcan off of one of their pockets to bring them back. Narcan is available everywhere. You can go to your pharmacies, they will give it to you. Pima County Health Department has different events or you can request it through them. They actually go to different organizations. If you want to um, have Narcan, they'll come out and tell you how to use it. It's very simple. Local libraries in, the, uh, in our community have them. I'm not too sure if a library out here has it, um, but I know our libraries in the city do have it. Schools. In our division, we have TUSD and Sunnyside School District. Sunnyside School District, um, their monitors, their staff, like principals and nurse, are the ones that carry Narcan. I think it's optional if the if teachers want to carry it. I think it's up to them. TUSD, it's only been the nurse, and that has to do with their board of, and I don't know why. Um, we've had incidents at Sunnyside School District already where we had to use Narcan on students that were that were having some epi, um, overdose on fentanyl so we had to use that use narcan and it was a monitor that that did that so it's it's in our schools i mean there's no way of keeping it out of our schools right now yes ma'am is it a spray or is it we'll get to the spray right now oh. I, bear with me i'm going to show you a video it's it's a very basic video where they allowed pbs to go and do a little documentary on on how it's made how fentanyl is made um, it's about four or five minutes and then um, just so you can see how it is and then that leads to how many pills are being made so it kind of gives you an idea okay sorry I guess I'm not gonna have any volume so in the video they're, they're, they're talking about Culiacan Sinaloa which is still fairly fairly south of our border they got access to go to a remote ranch where it, it belongs to the Sinaloa cartel so it's pretty much Chapo Guzman's organization this is showing how the, the cooks, these are what they're called cooks. And what they're doing right now is they're cooking the, the material right now to make fentanyl. As you can see, none of them are wearing any respirators, they're not wearing any protective equipment. And this is just showing how they prepare it. Very small, very tiny, or, you know, lab, I guess you can say that they're doing. Because is Chapo Guzman really going to allow you access to one of his labs where he's making millions and millions of pills? No, he's not. So it shows where they're using the synthetic powder and unfortunately the precursor chemicals that are coming in that they get from China. Um, it shows, so all it is is talking um, about how, where they're making it and she's asking questions about how ingenious that they're doing in the middle of the ranch, you know, kind of hidden between the cows and, you know, the, 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 in the middle of, the, of their ranch. They made her wear a respirator um, just because of the toxic fumes. The fumes from making this are so deadly that if you're in within the direction of wind, it will knock you out and it could potentially kill you. Mm -hmm. So they asked the gentleman too about what he thinks of, you know, about he's knowing that they're making fentanyl pills to, that ultimately is coming to the United States and killing these people. And he comes out and says it's pretty much a choice. You know, it's a choice of, you know, for somebody to consume it. Right there, what they're doing is they're making kind of like what that's usually called black tar heroin. Mm -hmm. And from there, what they're going to do, eventually they, they dry it out and it becomes a powder and then it goes to a pill press. They talk about, uh, I think a, a pound of that in Culiacan is about $11,000. You figure as they get closer to our borders and it goes further out east, we're talking about probably 30000 40000 a pound, depending on, on um, what they're doing. So I apologize, there's no, no air. It's, it is on PBS, it's called um, Frontier um, 
Fentanyl Frontier, um, if you, it's something you'd like to watch. It's just something very basic of um, kind of like the process they do. I do apologize for that. Yes, ma'am. You're talking about Guzman and these massive labs that he has. He would have his people all fully... No. No. He no. Has them. In, in the video, they kind of kid about it where the gentleman is carrying a tecate, a beer, and their way of um, testing it is they throw dirt in the air and they stand wind. If it's, you know, they will stand the opposite of the wind and they feel that by drinking a beer that they're going to be okay. Um, he even talks about losing um, colleagues to um, not being in the right place at the time and they end up. Because I've watched FBI shows yeah. and stuff like that, and in this country, right. I guess, when we, if, if we encounter something that we believe is fentanyl, we have to wear gloves, and so we have to put on our mask, and there's a lot of ways that we have to handle it. Unfortunately, in, in Mexico, they don't have the same standards, and unfortunately, what they do is they exploit, you know, some of these farmers or people that don't have a steady income. It's a really easy way for them to make an extra dollar and actually get by. Again, I apologize because this is intended for kids to understand how how this how bad these pills are. Is the way we look at it the sugar an analogy is we have powder, regular sugar, or and a granule powder and the little cubes. If we get all of them and we mix them, the way kind of like the cook was, he, he, we just throw everything in a pot. We start cooking it, and from there we start um, eventually making our pills. And say in the three precursor chemicals. The powder is the fentanyl, is the deli part. Since we're not regulating and knowing how much we're actually putting into the batch, we have no way to understand how much fentanyl is in each pill. So we make these pills, we can make a thousand pills and maybe only five pills get over the 14 granules because it's not measured in the lab. So what we try to tell them is you don't know what's in it and how much is in it and there's no way of telling. Um, so the other way I'll explain it to them is I'll, I'll bring a jar like aspirin or I usually do gum, the little cube gums and I'll, I'll ask who wants for, you know, who wants a gum? And the way I describe it is like we all grab one, maybe three of them are good and that one is the bad one that had too much of maybe the powdered sugar and is that's the one that ended up taking your life. Um, just so they can understand a little bit more of the analogy is that we don't know when they start mixing these chemicals since they're not in a lab. They're not going off of some type of formula to tell you how much fentanyl has to go into the batch. They just throw bags of the chemicals in there and mix it and cook it. Overdose, I mean, usually vomiting, foaming at the mouth. They're not breathing. I mean, usually that's probably the biggest thing. The color, changing colors, your fingertips will start changing colors. Those are really the basic signs of overdoses and it's almost the same thing for any other drugs is, is it's all the same signs. The only thing on fentanyl is they call it like the fentanyl fall. When they take a pill or they take whichever way they took the fentanyl, they they end up just dropping. And usually what they when it happens is where they take and that's where you see them on bus stops, their head just literally just drops. They can be sitting and their head will just drop and they're out. So it's almost to the point where it looks like they're unconscious. Narcan, again, it's a nasal spray. That's really what it looks like if you were to get it in a, in a can. So Narcan, all it is is an aerosol spray. Is It's just like Afrin, um, any of the nasal sprays that you take for allergy medicine or sometimes a cold. It is the same method. You administer by pushing it into the nose and you spray it. And it's an aerosol spray that goes into your nose. It does no harm if you're not under the effects of fentanyl. So if somebody is overdosed and you feel that it might be fentanyl and you give them Narcan and they're not under a fentanyl overdose, you are not going to hurt them. So it's absolutely safe. It's better to give it to them and, then, and not know than not give it to them. And sometimes people take multiple doses. Sometimes you might have to give them two, three sprays to be able to bring them back to where they can, their body starts responding and they start breathing. Yes, ma'am. If you've rescued somebody with a Narcan, how are they, you know, what are they like then? What, are they appreciative or mad at you or what? You get a mixture. Sometimes um, they don't realize when they come back what happened. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times they're upset and they're mad at you. Some 
just walk away. Um, we try to, for us, is we try to offer them services. Um, we we'll offer to take them. We we offer we give them all the information. But at the end, if they say no, then we can't force the person into getting help. Um, but we try to get them help. Doesn't work that way. The lieutenant talks about that. Pima Health Department told her that it takes a person six times to go to some type of rehab before they're successful in getting off of the drug. Um, and it's a 30-day rehab. So a lot of times what happens, unfortunately, they relapse and they start using again, and it gets to a point where sometimes they feel they need to go back. And go, but it takes up to six times before a person's even successful. So they're already against, the odds are already against them. Yes, sir? Is the effect of Narcan the same as fentanyl, or is it less? There is no effect. What, what, um, I'm, and I apologize for not knowing more than this, but from what the way they explain it to me is the, the Narcan just reverses the overdose. Right, what I mean is yes. the, the length of time of that reversal, is it uh, at least as long as the length of time of the effect of fentanyl? In other words, if they took a large overdose, mm -hmm. and then you gave them a dose of Narcan, they kind of woke up, they walk away, but they then become unconscious again. It's <laughs> later. It is possible, yes. And unfortunately, when we encounter that, we, we actually have the medical, uh, our fire department evaluate them. So it keeps them there a little bit longer to, to hopefully that doesn't happen. But it, it can uh, have that effect where it, it was a temporary fix and then they go down further down and they can go back under, depending on how much they take. And unfortunately, that also depends on the person. If it's, you know, size, how long they've been using drugs. Unfortunately, somebody who hasn't been using drugs or never used drugs may be instantly, as to somebody who's been using for a longer period of time, has a higher tolerance. Narcan, like I said, Pima County will come out to, if you did invite them, they'll do a presentation, and they will have it available if you want to have it. Unfortunately, nowadays, it's probably going to be at every store eventually. We go over the Good Samaritan Law with students, and the reason is, is what happens is when these kids are at parties or they're at home doing these things or wherever they end up um, having these overdoses, a lot of times our youth get scared because their friend either just had a really bad overdose or they know he's dead. So they get scared, and instead of calling 911, to get them medical attention and get help for them, they leave. And so the Good Samaritan Law pretty much states if you call 911 and you're using drugs and you may have drugs on you, they're not going to get arrested for the fact is because they want them to make sure they get help to these loved ones or to the one that's under the, that's possibly dying from the overdose. Um, it goes in return to for gunshots, shootings, a lot of times when we have shootings, they just drive to the hospital and dump the body or dump the person and don't actually call them for help. So it's just a way of telling youth, it's like, look, you're not going to get in trouble. They all get scared that they're going to get arrested or something's going to happen. So they end up leaving and they leave their friends there to pretty much die and do nothing for them. So if it has fentanyl in it, it will work. It will work. Yeah, it could be cocaine. With fentanyl, it's going to work. If if it's just fentanyl, it's going to work. It's usually now they're and I'll get to the next drug right now. They're mixing it with another drug, um, but it's really um, popular on the East Coast. It hasn't made its way to um, the to our area, um, but it's pretty much eventually coming here. Again, this is just from traffic stops or from some type of bus that the. Uh, the Counter Narcotics Alliance have done. Anytime you have drugs, there's money. I mean, it's just more blues. This is more in a powder sense. Uh, of course, you know, there's guns anytime there's any type of drugs involved. Um, this is just pictures that we show the kids that, you know, are out there. So they, you know, and, and they see it on their social media platforms. And that's the unfortunate part is everything's so available on our, on our social media platforms. And the, the reason also is that we hit this to, to the kids is do you think the person that's at QT or sickle K cares if if he's going to buy a Skittle or if he's going to buy rainbows? Those are other names that these pills have. These are fentanyl pills or blues. What they did is their cartels, again, got smart 
unfortunately, in a bad way, and they made them look like Skittles and rainbows. Mm. You know, so what I usually tell the kids, what market are they marketing this towards? <laughs> it's towards the younger generation. You know, the scary part is, we'll, I'll show you some other pictures, is that any child, maybe under 10, will probably think that is candy. And God forbid they were to grab it because maybe their parents or somebody in their family is using or finds these and ingests one. So unfortunately our market is right now our juvenile. That's where the money's at. These are pretty much for traffic stops. Just where they concealed it. I mean somebody had a towel on them where they were transporting because on a normal traffic stop I won't find that. But again, they put them in tamales. In, in a form just to conceal it and get it across or get it to wherever it was going. You'll see them stamped with different emblems. This one is a Superman pill. That's more towards the raves, ecstasy, where, uh, and raves are getting popular again. So these are pills that normally kids were or would use in, in raves, ecstasy, but now they're being laced with fentanyl or they have fentanyl on them. And so they, they make them look more of a designer drug as to getting a regular pill. These are again from traffic stops that they've done. And I'll point this one out. This was actually probably taken about maybe a couple months ago on a traffic stop. Any young <coughs> child sees that, they are gonna think it's candy. Th that's fentanyl. Those are actually Legos that you can actually put together, build something, and they made the labels that are actually fentanyl pills. We're starting to see them in gel caps, pretty much almost what looks like your over-the-counter gel caps. That was taken not too long ago from a traffic stop also. What I tell the kids is, if you don't get it from CVS, Walgreens, pharmacy, any type of pharmacy, these pills you shouldn't be taking from friends. I relate to it as we talk about Russian roulette, I call it pill roulette. You know, you may take one pill today and you'll be good. You may take one tomorrow and you might be high and you you're feel it's the best thing. And the next one you take may be the fatal one. You just never know when you're going to get that lethal dose. And unfortunately, what I tell them is when you do this, you're playing with your own life. Because again, everybody talks about it's a choice. They're making a choice. So this is just more of the bulk, which is powder. In cartels, what they usually do is if you see it's the apple emblem, it's the transformer, the trident. A lot of cartels, what they do is they like to mark their, their drugs. So I'm not sure which cartel it belongs to, but like the other brands that are uh, popular are John Deere, Ferrari, Puma. Those are very popular brand names that, that we know of, but they use it to mark their drugs to say that belongs to say the Sinaloa cartel, or maybe the, the Jalisco cartel. They all have an emblem specific to them. Um, I don't know which ones they are. I used to be pretty good at it. Those are pill presses. I, I, you can barely see them in the background, I'm sorry. That's, these are desktop pill presses. How many pills do you think an hour a desktop pill press can make? 300. Anybody else? No, 1,800. An hour. And I'm pretty sure they have these things running 24 hours a day. So you figure this is a desktop. That's the ones that we can sit here on our desk and just feed it for 24 hours. It makes 1,800 pills an hour. An industrial size, which I would think these cartels have. Industrial size pill press. How many pills do you think an industrial one makes? An hour. Three thousand. Ten thousand. Not even close. A million pills. Can you imagine if that runs twenty-four hours? That's just one. And that just shows like a lab. These pictures were taken from when they download phones from drug dealers that they ended up arresting. They download their pictures and their photos. This is a lab that was in Mexico. And it just shows the presses and where they're, where they're cooking the, the stuff. Um, this is normally the way people use on the streets. The way they use the, the fentanyl pills, usually they crush the pill 
and then they'll actually burn it and they they they, they suck in the, the smoke. And that's usually where you see the burnt um, foil. This is what you're starting to see back east, xylazine. Anybody know what xylazine is used for? Do we have any horse ranchers here? Xylazine is actually a medication that's used by vets as a horse tranquilizer. So now they're mixing, that is a new mix that they're mixing into the fentanyl. And the problem with xylazine is Narcan doesn't work on it. So fentanyl is already a drug that puts you down. And now you're adding xylazine that is a horse tranquilizer to it. Yes, ma'am. So what's the deal? If you're going to show people off that Narcan doesn't work, you can show a lot more people off to market this. And you know what? I, I don't know. But the thing is, there's the market keeps growing. That's the problem. You know, we don't know how to, I guess the magical answer would be how do we control the market? And we start from, you know, a very young age telling our kids, don't use drugs, don't use drugs. And unfortunately, some of them still make that decision. Some of them still experiment. And unfortunately, you know, if it was just experimenting and, it, and you know, things went along with life, but sometimes it leads to where you experiment with something that's ultimately taking your life. Yes? They're not actually making the um, fentanyl though in Mexico. They're getting it from the ingredients from China or something, aren't they? Or so generally, it's the, they get the chemicals from China, China. then they it's make it in they make it in Mexico, and then unfortunately Mexico uses our borders to to bring it across. So we've got two other two, you know, another country involved in it, not just Mexico. Right, right. I mean, I guess if we control what comes into Mexico, but we don't have. I mean, that gets into more politics. We don't have the control <laughs> when that happens. Um, this QR code does work. It's a very good. It was created by um, Haida and. The Counter Narcotics Alliance. What it is, it has a bunch of different resources available. It'll tell you where you can go for help. It'll tell you how to use Narcan, where to get it. It's in English and Spanish. It just has a lot of information. Um, you can go there and it'll give you different trends. It'll go. It'll show you pictures. It, it's pretty much everything's on here that has to do with all drugs, not just fentanyl. Another thing I wanted, I, I looked up before I got here. Uh, 12, I mean, 6 and Ajo. I'm not sure if anybody's familiar with the location, 6 and Ajo. I mean, it's, it's maybe about 15, 20 minutes from here, right by the Veterans Hospital. So DPS, uh, our highway patrol detectives, served the search warrant on a house um, in, the, in the general area. And this just happened last week. They got 93 pounds of pills. Mm -hmm. I was trying to figure out how much 93 pounds was, but I couldn't, but it sounds like a whole lot. That was just in one one incident. Arizona has been number one in the United States for the last three years for drug seizures. 50% of all fentanyl seizures in the United States are in Arizona. We beat Texas and we beat California. You figure those are the two other states and New Mexico that have, the, that have a border. We beat them. We're number one in the United States for, for seizures. They're not coming over from individuals, they're coming over from the um, gangs or whatever. You know what, it's unfortunate with, with social media, you're seeing younger kids, um, and it goes with people also um, to transport illegals and it happens with drugs. Um, they, on social media is pretty much the recruiting tool. So they'll offer kids a thousand dollars to go pick up a car in Nogales and drive it into a specific location in Tucson. So a lot of kids get the temptation of easy, easy money, and they do that. But that's just one method. There's probably hundred different methods of ways that the cartels are actually bringing the, the stuff across. I apologize. It's very basic. You know, a lot of times it's my crowd is 15 year olds and 17 year olds. <laughs> yes, sir. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. I'm curious, you're talking about the uh, cartels being smart. Are there any cartels smart enough to get reputation where you don't die if you take the pill? I mean, wouldn't that be ultimately better business? Ultimately, it comes down to the dollar. I mean, for them, it's all about the money. There was an article not too long ago, and, you know, I don't know how truth it could be. It was, it was, it was out of Mexico where the 
Los Chapitos, which is Chapo Guzman's kids that took over, um, was saying that in their town of Culiacan, because that's where they're from, if they caught you selling fentanyl or using fentanyl, that they were going to do something to you. And it meant they were probably going to take you out because he was trying to clean his city. I don't know if that's any truth or not, but that he did he did put that out to you know to see if he can clean his little community, but he doesn't care or they don't care or anybody else's community. And for them, it's about the money. Yes, ma'am. Do you, do you have any comparisons since so much that was coming across in Arizona? How um, I don't know how you would compare it, but have kids, high school kids, say in California, are there more deaths? Of Good question. I don't know if everybody heard that. Um, the question was if we have any numbers to comparison to any like fatal overdoses comparing to other states like California, Arizona, and Texas. And I don't because I'm not sure if the lieutenant has that or has that information. I just we just deal with Southern Arizona. Uh, but that is a good question to see where we uh, fall um, uh, amongst the other states. Yeah, since um, we have so much of it here. Right. Do we have? Well, here? usually Tucson is a a stoppy point. We're a hub. You know, it gets to Tucson, it can go north, it can go west, it can go east. And so, usually Tucson is, and it's always been like that even before fentanyl, even when marijuana was illegal, when, we, when it was bales, it was always a hub to where eventually it was going to end up. You know, because I-10, then um, it leads to I-17, which goes to I-40 which we're, we're in the middle to where it's distributed. So um, unfortunately, that's why we see so much go through Tucson and being so close to the border. Yes, sir. Are the drug sniffing dogs they will pick this up? Yes, but again, on for the dogs, for at least at the school level, the school will not allow the dog to go through the school. I think it has to do with school politics. <laughs> I don't want to say that, and it probably, you know, the, the perception they would probably give is something that they wouldn't want the, I, and I'm talking on the dare, and I, I probably shouldn't, but that drug dogs, um, will, they, they will not be allowed to, to go on campus. Uh, you mentioned earlier at the beginning of your talk that some schools will let you come and give your presentation. Are there schools that, that they have? We reached out to other districts. Now it's just a matter of sometimes some of the visitors have to go through maybe their board to make sure it's okay. It's something they approve. And I understand, you know, maybe something a parent doesn't want their um, child to attend. So it really comes down to where um, some districts have been really, receptive, you know, good about it. TUSD has been good. Sunnyside, we reached out to other districts. and. Yeah, I just think it's a matter of time before they 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 invite us, or maybe their own jurisdiction starts doing something. You were saying there were traffic stops. Where do most of your traffic stops occur? Are they could be anywhere. Up and down 19. <laughs> it's everywhere. It, it's it could be for DPS. It's going to be the the interstate. I mean, for us, it's going to be in the city. So it could be anywhere. But unfortunately, with with pills, it's it's so easy to hide. Um, on a on a regular traffic stop for an officer, unless it's in plain view, they're not going to see it. Yes, sir. This is off topic, but do you have a similar program, or does the police department have a similar program for guns in the school? There is an initiative that's starting. I don't know much about it. I'm not part of. I'm kind of part of it, but don't not really. But it's something that they're partnering up with Goodwill. Um, to, to try to um, reduce gun violence because unfortunately there's guns everywhere. <laughs> do they do you have a program with the drugs see something say something with the high school kids or dating kids or are they responding to any of that? Here? No, right now really all we, we're trying to do is just bring awareness. They used to have DARE and all these other programs um, back years past. We don't have those programs anymore. We don't have the, well we don't have the staff or probably the, or the funding for it. So right now it's pretty much awareness and the reason I, we call it awareness is because unfortunately our youth has already been used to being told not to do something and we already know what happens, they end up doing it anyways. And it's more of them to make a sound decision or at least think about their decision before they do it 
because uh, ultimately, anytime they make one of these decisions, they're, they're playing with their own life. Yes, ma'am. You just go to high schools or do you go to middle schools? Right now, it's been just a high school. Uh, middle school has been a little still. I worked at a middle school in TUSD, so right. yeah, they could use the world. Right. There's, I, I think, you know, <laughs> the, way, the way I look at it with social media also is if you're, if you already give your son or daughter a phone at whatever age, then mm -hmm. it's already a good time to start educating them on social media. So their phone is probably going to be the quickest way to get exposed to drugs because Snapchat, Telegram, Instagram, all these platforms that is popular with the youth is where they're reaching out and one, promoting it, and two, ordering it or being part of it. Yes, ma'am. Do you have any sense of how aware and informed parents are? I think, unfortunately, parents nowadays are worried about being the friend and not so much as being involved and being a little bit proactive. And, and usually, because I'll talk to parents also, the question, usually the first question I ask is how many of you go through your, your children's cell phone? If they say no, then they have no clue what their kids are doing. And that's the unfortunate part because they're not going, everything they do is on their phone. If they're using drugs, it's on their phone. If they're buying drugs, it's on their phone. And I try to tell them it's not about being nosy or, or it is being nosy, but not get, uh, where you're violating their space. You know, you pay for the phone, it's your phone. You, sh you need to take the initiative to be able to catch this before it's too late, and that's the issue. But they have to start from an early age. It's hard to go to a high schooler and say, give me your phone. It starts a fight. And unfortunately, what happens from there is when that fight starts, the argument, sometimes parents give in because they either run away or they, they say they're going to hurt themselves. And so sometimes they, they don't continue with the battle, I guess, and they give in. Uh, I'm not saying all parents are like that. Unfortunately, it's just a lot of parents in, these, in this day want to be friends instead of you know being the parent first and then be the friend. Yes, ma'am. we got room for about three more questions. Okay. I'm confused by the term um, uh, accidental overdose. It's used by a lot of uh, family members, a lot of family members died. Oh, Is there yes. a legitimate use for fentanyl so that, and then would these typically it, it's be able used to as a, It's used as a pain drugs? medication. Right. Usually the act of, um, if it's prescribed to you, it's going to be minimal, I, and I know that it, is, it could be prescribed, but most of the time they give it to you at the hospital. It's the unfortunate, it's, um, it, usually the people or the ones that get addicted to it are somebody who's already been addicted to like some type of oxycodone or a Xanax or an opioid, and now since pharmacies and doctors are being regulated, they don't get the large quantities anymore. Now if you go to a pharmacy, they give you maybe five, six pills. And unfortunately, that doesn't control the pain, or maybe the body's already been immune to it, so they go to a harder substance, which usually led to heroin. Heroin's expensive. Um, heroin is has a season because it's made out of a poppy seed, so it, you have to harvest it, so there's more that goes into it, so heroin's a little bit more, it's quite a bit expensive, and then you have to inject it. So now when you make, you make a pill for 50 cents, that's going to give me the same effects or even better, then it's logical. That's why fentanyl's taken over everything. Yes, sir. I apologize. I'm coming in late, so I don't know what you covered. You have to stay late. Okay. <laughs> All right. I've got a comment and then, and then a question. Uh, our son actually died from fentanyl about a year ago. Mm. I'm sorry. And um, we th we're quite sure it was not that he was taking fentanyl knowledgeably. And he was he was doing because uh, he also in the autopsy he had Xanax, which is an anxiety, mm -hmm. and so um, we think that that was an accidental. But it's it's so powerful. Um, the the question that I have is I know there's been discussion like in California of considering a fentanyl death as a homicide. Mm -hmm. Is that discussed here at all? So Pima County. Um they go after the dealer. 
So if they could determine um, who is the one that sold the fentanyl, then they go after the dealers. So they're, they are starting to go after the dealers that are, if they're able to track down who they bought the drug from. See, what, what we were not aware of at the time of his death is that we were able to get his cell phone back from the uh, sheriff's department. Uh -huh. And it never occurred to us to say, why don't you guys take a look at this? Because we, it may be possible that he bought it online mm -hmm. and you'd be able to then trace right. where it came from. Right, so uh, for Pima County, we, we do go after dealers and usually, um, I'm not sure on, on from the, our detectives, usually when there's a fentanyl overdose, our detectives for the for the department for Tucson Police will go out to the incident, and we usually download the cell phones. You so do. it means they download the content of the cell okay. phones, and and that's how they backtrack and try to find out who it is that they're able to purchase the drug from. Yeah. Um, if they're able to determine and find who the dealer is, then they do go after them for the homicide. You know what, there, I think right now there's support everywhere. And it's just because this is so dangerous and it's, it, it's not any community that's gonna get affected by it. Everybody's affected by it. It's just so, the problem is there's so much unknown about it, how it's gonna affect. I mean, so everybody's on board, it's just how do you find the right answer? I would think 50% of the seizures, the feds would wanna come in and try and take credit or do something for it. Well, they are involved because it's part of CNA, so the feds are part of involved in that. The only thing, what, I, what I'm getting at is, how do you fix that? We took 50%, but there's another 50% that got through. You know, what's going to happen next year? They're going to get smarter or find different ways, so now maybe they get more across, or it's just how do we fix that? That's the magical question, or how do we get Continue. people from not taking the fentanyl? You're welcome. Oh, I shut it off. Sorry. Yes, sir. Right. You're welcome yeah. to stay and answer questions as long as you want, or sure. you can shoot out the door. Whatever your no. choices that you'd like. <laughs>